Hello everyone, my name is Raven Reginald. I'm a senior at Floyd Memorial High School and a Wisconsin Education Leadership for Community Outreach and Mentoring for the Environment or Welcome Intern at the Wealthy Environmental Center. My GLOBE project is on macroinvertebrate communities in different nitrate levels across the Rock River watershed. Uh, when I first started this experiment, I had to do some background research. So we found that nitrate levels are a common pollutant in urban water systems. In 2017, the EPA found about 284 water systems in Wisconsin exceeded the standard nitrate level by 10 parts per million. This also included Rock County. Increased nitrate levels have been found to affect macroinvertebrate communities by affecting the water nutrients. This brought up the research question, do nitrate levels affect macroinvertebrate communities in the Rock River watershed? With that being said, we started collecting data. Our sites were surveyed in March through April of 2022. We first determined riffles, runs, and pools by using the GLOBE freshwater protocols for collecting our site's data. We gathered three samples per each site. We used the GLOBE protocols to identify site types like vegetative banks, rocky or silty soil, and if there are any logs to determine what tests we need to follow. The protocols also told us what materials we need to use, like dip nets and sieves, and how we can collect the individuals. We tested nitrate levels using Aquatech nitrate strips. We took three tests per site and calculated the average by parts per million. Each sample was performed for three minutes before collecting the individuals in a one meter squared area. We collected individuals from a fine mesh sieve and put them in ethanol to preserve them for identification later. Um, if you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, right here, we have our scud. He was one of the individuals we found. We also have the dragonfly larvae, and we have the cookie-headed mayfly. And this picture right here is just a picture in the field where Darian and I were collecting individuals out of the sieve to put them in ethanol. Here's the bottle of ethanol to preserve them for later identification. Um, we identified them using macroinvertebrates.org and the Pond Life book. We identified them by class and their pollution indicator status. The pollution indicator status ranges from sensitive to tolerant. The more sensitive classes are EPT or Ephemeropta, Plecoptera, and Trichoptera. The more tolerant ones are Diptera. So for our results, we found that Springbrook had a greater number of individuals than any other site. They also had the most orders. So if you can see here in figure one, uh, Springbrook has many different colors, meaning it has many different orders. And down here in figure two, you can see that it had more individuals. Odonates were only found at the nature of the confluence. Looking back at figure one, this purple or this pink strip up here is their odonates and it's only found in nature of the confluence. Most individuals were found in the diptera order. All of these red, um, squares right here, the diptera order, which we had the most of, those are our true flies. At nature of the confluence, there was a higher nitrate level that could have resulted in less macroinvertebrates. So table one shows our nitrate levels. Um, Riverside Park had the lowest amount at 0 0.16 parts per million, and nature at the confluence had the highest amount at 10 parts per million, with Springbrook Park in the middle at 7.8. Uh, River and Riverside Park and Springbrook Park both had less mid-range pollution indicator status than nature of the confluence. Uh, in figure two, it shows here that Riverside and Springbrook had less mid-range, these are red ones right in the middle, than nature of the confluence that had more. Um, we also have figure three here that tells the nitrate levels and the relationships between the number of order classifications found at each site. So you can see the line in there is R squared, which tells us the relationship between them. And if there is a relationship at all, ranging from zero to one. So if it's closer to zero, there's no relationship. And if it's closer to one, there is more of a relationship, a linear line. Um, R, R squared was 0 0.275, which means there is a bit of a relationship. But we do have to preface that we only did three sites, so there could be more or less of a relationship depending on if you have more sites, which brings up further experiments with this one in mind. If we do find more sites, then we can add it to it and see if there's a larger or smaller relationship. With that being said, I'd like to thank the National Science Foundation for funding. I'd like to thank 
the following for logistical support, Erin Wilson and Brenda Plackins at the Wealthy Environmental Center, Deb Prowse at the School District of Beloit, and Michael Natero at UW-Madison Center for Climatic Research at the Nelson Institute. I'd also like to thank Darian Becker for field assistance and thank you for listening.